Street with GCI Turf. I hope you're having a great day today. And as you can see, I have a very special guest with me. This is the Grasshopper Stand On Mower, and this is the GCI Turf Mow Down Showdown. So if you're new to the channel, be sure to like, subscribe, and share it to all you buddies in lawn care. We've got a really cool opportunity here to go over 14 of the best stand on mowers made in America. Please be aware this is not a paid promotion. None of these mowers are paying me anything to do this. I'm doing this on my own time, on my own dime. I do ask that you be respectful in the comments and what I mean by that is I'm sure somewhere along the road you've had a bad experience with one of these machines and it's left a bad taste in your mouth, okay? We've all been there, all done that. But what I want you to know, Americans build these mowers. They go out and they generate an income. They take that home to their family. So something you might potentially say could affect that in a negative way somewhere down the line. And I know that's a weird way of looking at it, but it's my way of looking at it. That's why I ask that you be respectful. To my knowledge, there's never been anything like this on YouTube. So you know, I, I'm, I'm honored. I mean, it's a really big privilege for me to be able to do this. It's definitely not gonna be a competition style video. We're not putting one versus the other, but instead I've got a group of categories, a long list of categories, and we're gonna score from one to 10 in each category. And then you get to make up your mind which one of these machines will fit your business the best. Uh, you know, I like to start these videos off with my one word. I mowed my fescue, bluegrass rye mix right here which by the way is glowing like a new penny i mowed my bluegrass back there which is on fire uh, my my father-in-law's yard over there which is looking really good right now and my neighbor's yard uh, across the street which is looking really good right now so with all that mowing done while everything's fresh on my mind i like to give you one word that i feel like overall uh, best describes the machine uh, for obviously from my point of view and that one word is going to be smooth this is a very smooth machine all the way from the hydraulics uh, all the way down to the cut quality uh, the way it handles uh, it's just a very smooth uh, fluid machine uh, it, it's not overpowered it doesn't seem to be underpowered that you know the power range seems to be just right the hydraulics seem to be very uh, easy to manipulate uh, there's a couple of little things that I'm not a big fan of on the hydraulics but we'll talk about that later but but in general, overall, it's a super smooth operating machine. So the first category is what I call bad to the bone. That's the aesthetics of the machine and the build quality. Aesthetics meaning how's it look? Y'all know I like the muscle cars. I'm a big time Mustang guy and I love horsepower, things that thump the ground. And uh, you know, you just get that, that tough, muscle car stance look. I kind of associate the machine in that kind of a way as, as the way it relates to cutting grass. And just looking at it, uh, the way the machine looks, it looks really good. It looks fantastic, to be honest with you. You know, it's got that iconic uh, brown and tan grasshopper color, which, you know, uh, I, I would imagine that's either a yeah I like it or no I don't like it. It's probably a pretty cut and dried with that. I don't know if that would be a kind of a in the middle look for some folks, but for me, uh, I kind of like it. I, I, I like the uh, the brown and tan, and they've got the splash of red uh, for the logo. Uh, that kind of gives it a little bit of color and makes it pop. The tires, uh, that adds to the look and makes it look really nice and cool and muscly because the, the tread pattern on it is quite a bit more aggressive than uh, some of the other tires that, that we've used on other machines. And I'm not a fan of these in no way whatsoever. Uh, we'll get into that later. But as far as the aesthetics go, it makes it look pretty cool. Uh, I like the way the platform kind of comes up and arches over uh, the, the motor right here. All that's pretty cool. The stance is kind of short and stocky and wide. Uh, the fenders have a good 
profile to them, the way they kind of wrap around the tires from the back end uh, really looks nasty from the back end because you have this big wide uh, machine and then the the, the, the pad that you lean against kind of matches that. It's a humongous pad in the back. And I just, I kind of think that looks pretty cool. The way they've designed this and kind of brought this front nose out to a point and then wrapped it back up under, and they were able to tuck some headlights in right here, that, that just really looks sweet. As far as the machine looks, uh, I gotta give it a, I got to give it a nine and a half because it, it's a it's a pretty tough looking mower. As far as build quality goes, uh, what I do is look at the design of the frame and the welds and how things are put together, the linkage and that kind of thing. And um, I'd have to say the build quality on this is absolutely top notch. Uh, really, really good. It's like we've got a two by two uh frame right there that comes all the way to the back and kind of tapers out for the casters the casters look like they are replaceable with one simple bolt and you can take that off and put a whole new caster assembly on all the linkage here for the deck uh adjustment is nice got uh, spring assisted on both sides the welds on it um you know i've said this with all the machines uh, it looks like this has actually more hand uh, human being welds on it because you can see slight imperfections in the weld and of course that's just aesthetic it, it's not going to affect how it holds a piece of metal together um, this rail along the bottom that definitely looks like that is done with a uh, robot I believe but the build quality, I mean, you, I'm finding this across the board with all the machines. Uh, they're made in America. I mean, you know, I mean, what else you want me to say? Uh, the build quality on it is absolutely top notch. And, and I can say that with a little bit of experience too. We actually own four of the Grasshopper diesels that we uh, use the aerovator attachment on. And you, you can't tear them up. They're just, they're built like an army tank. Um, with that said, of course, a nuclear bomb would destroy an army tank. So, you know, don't take that the wrong way. They're not indestructible, but they are uh, built extremely well. So, I um, mean, I can't find anything that, you know, looks out of place as far as the build quality goes or maybe a weak link. Um, I, build quality, I got to give it a 9.5. All right, so the next category is going to be the toolbox, and that's the ease of maintenance. You know, we typically like to do our own oil changes. We change our own belts, and of course, sometimes we do a little bit of hydraulic uh, work as far as changing fluids and filters and stuff, and of course, sharpening the blades. All of these machines are the same. Uh, you have to get the front end off of the ground one way or the other, take the blade off, sharpen it, balance it, clean it, put it back on. Uh, so that's you know that's kind of cut and dried with all the machines, but changing the belts on these things, uh, that's what I want to look at because uh, this one looks to be a little bit tricky. First thing I like to do is drop the mower deck all the way down so that we can access the uh, pulleys and the belts pretty easily. All right, so right off the bat, I uh, really do not like this at all. I've got to have a tool. Where the majority of these uh, machines, these stand-on mowers, will have those little, uh, what do you call those things? The little wing nut thingamajiggies like this right here that uh, you can access this stuff without tools. But in order to get this off right here, I've got to have a wrench, so that means I have to keep a toolbox with me. Or at least I've got to keep the right size wrench for this. It looks like a 7 16 maybe. And one thing I really don't like about it, having to do this is there's a hole in the side of this cover instead of a slot. And what I mean by that is sometimes you can just barely loosen the nut and get it out a little bit quarter inch and then this plate will slide up 
through a groove that's been cut in it where this one is simply a hole you have to take the entire uh, bolt out and I do not like that at all and this would be an extremely easy fix I mean you're talking about replacing these bolts with uh, wing nut or molded wing nuts so that you can uh, access this right here with without any kind of tools so we get those down and then pop this off that's a little bit stiff right there ah i see why there's one more tucked up in here that you've got to take off yeah uh, i don't think i can do that with an adjustable let me go get a socket it's actually a 3 8 is what that is so let's see now we got that off and here's one side mm. there's the tensioner pulley right there yep pretty easy to get to so this does appear to be a one uh serpentine belt that connects to everything which i like the one belt uh setup versus two different belts oh look at here your uh, spindles are greasable they have grease search right here on the spindles. They're actually pretty easy to get to. Uh, here's your tensioner pulley. Of course, you would push that and then take your belt off, reroute a new belt on, push the tensioner back in, and then everything's tightened up again. Um, you know, I gotta be honest with you right here. I'm, I'm not a fan of having to put a new belt on this thing. It just, it doesn't look, super easy um you know one thing that would definitely help grasshopper is if you put these molded wing nuts let me show you what a molded what i'm calling a molded wing nut. i don't know if that's the actual term for it or not but a lot of your machines have this on it and that could actually go right here of course a smaller version of that and that way you wouldn't have to have any tools and this plate this protection plate would come off considerably easier and i think that would make my overall thoughts of changing the belt um more positive but you when you ever got to have tools on a mower to do basic maintenance that's, just, that's a big turn off for me. I don't, I don't like that. All right, so while we're over here, let's look at the oil filter. And it's this yellow filter right here. Fairly easy to get to. You could take your guard off right here. You could pretty much get an oil pan, a little drain pan right up under here, a, th a thin one, narrow one. And you can get to this uh, oil filter pretty easily. Let's raise the deck up and see if that changes anything and you can still get to it easily but there's nowhere to put your pan so you definitely want to make sure you drop the deck all the way down so you can you can slide an oil pan under there now hopping over here to the other side that's cool not gonna lie that is super cool uh, this thing kind of clips right there out of the way and then you've got this cap. Uh, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> of course, if I if I take that, uh, if I unscrew that, then oil is going to come out. And you see that cap just kind of comes off, and then you can drain your oil out. Now, here's the thing. Let's drop the deck down. If we come right up under here, uh, it comes out fairly decent. Uh, you can probably put the edge of the. Uh, drip pan right here and probably get it all drained out without making a mess um, Wow if this thing was like Three inches longer at the you know at the most, you know if, if it come out to the edge of the deck Wow, that would make so much difference um, I'm sure uh, I'm sure grasshopper doesn't have much to do with that. That's probably a Briggs and Stratton thing uh, the way they do these engines but I would say that that's a very, very good idea, a very good design. And it's actually pretty easy to change the oil on this machine. All right, let's come back here. 
and see if we can't find the hydros. And again, I've got these daggone bolts I've got to take off before I can do anything. So let's take those off. Let's see if that changes anything right there. Oh yeah, that's nice. All right, my, my padding didn't stay up. Here's your battery right here. Pretty easy to get to. And we got one big massive hydraulic pump back here, which is really cool. Um, what I'm looking for now is a hydraulic filter. Right here's your filler where you can add more hydraulic fluid to it. I don't actually see a hydraulic filter anywhere on here. So with any of these machines, uh, just because I don't see the filter, doesn't mean one's not on here, uh, but I'm not seeing it. So, uh, you know, something like this, if we had hydraulic issues or, uh, you know, wanted to change the hydraulic fluid or whatever, I would definitely send this one back to the dealer. Definitely, because I just don't see any way uh, with our limited mechanical abilities as a company that I just I just wouldn't want to fool with that to be honest with you so overall uh, ease of maintenance the oil pretty cut and dried pretty simple uh, battery simple uh, the belt eh, not a fan of the way up change the belt the uh, hydraulics uh, we wouldn't fool with it we'd take it back to the dealer uh, the belt, uh, not at all a fan of that. Um, anytime I have to bring my own tools to work on something as simple as changing a belt, uh, yeah, hate to say it, but that's that's a that's a no go for me. I just I, I'm not a fan of that in any way. Uh, because I have to bring my toolbox uh, to the yard with me when I'm cutting grass and. You know, in case I ever had to change the belt, I'm gonna give the ease of maintenance an eight. Next category is uh, ingenuity, and that's gonna go over the controls, the layout, ergonomics, uh, ergonomics, functionality, ease of use, the comfort, and we'll talk about the fuel tanks. You know, I've uh, made this pretty clear about the layout of the controls. I feel like all of this stuff, key PTO, throttle, choke, deck adjustment, brake should be very easy to get to when i'm standing on the machine i shouldn't have to reach i shouldn't have to bend over there's there's more than enough room here to lay out the controls in such a way that uh i shouldn't even have to move i, I should be everything should be within a hand's reach and i will say grasshopper you have nailed it I mean, nailed it. I can go right down the line here. Key, PTO, throttle, choke. They're all right here. Try and get to them super easy. Height of cut adjustment right here. I don't even have to bend over to get to it. And the parking brake is right here. It, everything is super easy to get to on the layout. So I'm not gonna spend much time on that because you, you've heard me you know yakking about that uh, for the past however many mowers we've done uh, but your control layout grasshopper gets a 10 hands down a 10 probably one of the best i've seen so far uh, everything you can just get to it so incredibly easy i like that a lot so let's talk about the ergonomics uh, i got pretty pretty good sized hands and the one thing that uh sticks out to me is i can adjust this front bar pretty easily with those two pins and you can see how that comes backwards and forwards right there so you can actually set it to where it fits your hands exactly now of course the further back you pull this the slower it's going to go because that won't allow the drive bars to go any further forward so there's a you know point there where you have to maybe sacrifice a little bit of ergonomics right here for speed uh, you know that's up to the individual user when i set it right here to where my bend in my fingers just barely wraps around that front bar and then you know i operate the machine with the palm of my hand and the inside of my thumb right there 
uh, when I set it and then go full throttle, it's actually pretty much spot on for my hands. And um, it feels good, not gonna lie. It, it really does feel good in your hands. Uh, this neoprene type uh, material around the, the dry bars, uh, you know, that, that looks to be about three quarter, maybe an inch in diameter. So the dry bars are, are pretty fat around. And then uh, you got the same textured stuff right here. Uh, a little bit different rubbery texture right here, but it all just feels good in my hands. It fits my hands really good. So ergonomics, uh, I, mean, I gotta give it a 9.5. Functionality and ease of use. Uh, the only thing that's really kinda a little bit tricky to get to is this headlight right here. But you can see if I have my hands on the control bars, I'm just basically taking my middle finger and, and pointing it straight down and turning that off and on. Uh, you know, headlights, do you need them? Yes or no? <laughs> it just depends on what time of the day you mow grass, I guess. Uh, I personally probably would, wouldn't use them unless, you know, you're loading up a trailer really, really early in the morning and you need a light to, to, to do that safely. Um, I'm definitely not going to be cutting grass that, that early. I have cut it that late before. The first mower I ever owned, uh, my Xmark commercial zero term, I actually had to put headlights on it. I wired up a set of lights on the front casters. Uh, I just worked that many hours to where I mowed on into the night uh, to get my business going. So, yeah, headlights will come into play or, or, or help you uh, at some point or the other if you're in that same same situation I was in. Everything, like I said, super easy to get to. Uh, you know, the, the way everything works and functions here, um, I mean, I gotta give it a nine and a half. It's just that simple. Comfort kind of goes into um, all of this and I found this to be super comfortable. Uh, it's, it's just, Everything seems to fit in my hands really, really well. So the height of cut adjustment, how easy is it? Uh, pretty easy. It's pretty standard over here on the side where you have your different uh, increments set. And we'll put it down on three and a half. Come right here, get in the operating position. And you can see that's pretty dang easy. Uh, this does lock as you pull up. I can lock it in individual uh, adjustments, in individual settings, like so. Whereas you see some of the machines, once you go all the way down, it's free floating, meaning you have to pull it all the way back to lock it, where this one locks at each setting. And now I'm down to where my pin is at. Uh, I got two big springs down there to help uh, with the tension. And you can see it's pretty dang easy, pretty simple uh, to pull that thing back like that. So uh, to be honest with you, I don't know that that could even be easier. Uh, height of cut adjustment, I'm gonna give it a 10. So the fuel tanks, uh, you know, I like this setup, one on each side. It kind of balances out the weight. Got one on this side over here, and then another over here. And then it pulls individually off a tank. So there's a switch right up under here. It's super easy to get to left and right. When one runs empty, you simply switch it over to the other side and keep getting it. Now this last feature I wanna show you is uh, pretty much um, exclusive to Grasshopper. It is extremely cool. I really like it a lot. It plays into everything we just talked about as far as the controls go. What I mean by that is, you know, we have the adjustability here where I can adjust it to fit my hands. Well, if I'm a taller guy and I want the entire platform up higher, I can have it. Or if I'm a shorter guy, I can have the platform shorter if I want it that way. What I mean is impact drill, three quarter inch socket, and watch this. That 
is really, really cool. I could even be a taller guy with long arms and I want my arms to be fully extended down and I can have it set on the shortest uh, position. Let's say I'm a shorter guy, but I want my hands more out in front of me. I can do that as well. So the adjustability on this entire platform here is just absolutely crazy. I love it. Uh, I mean, I absolutely love it. What if you have a whole fleet of these machines and surely all the operators are not all the same size and you dedicate a mower to a specific individual so you can actually uh, fit the machine to that individual, which is just, I love it. I absolutely love the ingenuity behind that. Everything about this machine from here up uh, is absolutely near perfect. It, it is more, probably the best I've seen so far. So the next category is Battle of the Blades where we're gonna look at the height of cut range, uh, how accurate that is, uh, the cut quality, how well does it side discharge and how it stripes. So uh, let's go over here in the garage and we'll look at the height of cut range and the height of cut accuracy. All right, so we're under the deck here. First thing I do notice is we've got a striping flap back here to enhance the mower stripes. That's some good looking spindles. I don't know the actual details on them, but they, they look pretty stout. Uh, same basic design here. You know, same basic design as most other mowers that you would see now. Uh, again, I want to make mention that, you know, these manufacturers put a lot of time and effort into the design down to the inch of each piece of metal up under here and obviously it's be incredibly difficult for me to to know all of that uh all of that engineering design behind it so what i'm getting at is that you know they're designed by engineers and they each have their own little unique thing but you know from an end user perspective I'm just under here looking at a mower deck and all this looks to be pretty standard across the board um so i'm not really seeing anything that's super unique and super different about under this mower deck but uh you know that doesn't, doesn't mean it's going to cut good or bad uh we won't know that until we use it but uh, nothing up under here really sticks out to me as being different or unique so the height of cut goes from 5.5 down to 1.5, but you can see here the 1.5 notches here, and we got one more below it. If we go here, inch and a half, down, inch and three quarter, up two inches, down two and a quarter, up two and a half. So actually that may be a inch and a quarter right here. Let's measure the first one at an inch and a half. Whoa, that's way off. That's like three quarter inch. Yeah, that's off quite a bit. Let's check it at two inches. So at the two inch mark, it says an inch and a quarter. Let's go up to three inches. And we're a touch over the two inch mark right there. So wow, we're uh, off almost an entire inch. This one's off pretty bad, so I'm actually checking more. Uh, I'm actually checking it at more intervals to see what's up here, four inches. And at the four inch mark, we're reading a touch over three inches. And we'll try it at the five inch setting. So at the five inch setting, you're sitting dead on four inches. And the actual height of cut when you measure the blade off the ground is quite a bit different. It's off bad. Um, you can look at this machine and see there is adjustment to it. So I don't know if the dealer uh, is required to adjust that or it, was, it should be adjusted from the factory. I do know that this one comes straight from Grasshopper Factory. Come uh, directly from those guys that didn't go through a dealer. And uh, you didn't set the height right <laughs> you're an inch off which is 
pretty bad, uh, in my opinion. Uh, if you have a, a new person on the machine, you say, hey, go mow uh, Miss Betty's yard at four inches. And he puts it on four inches and goes out there and he actually cuts it on three inches. That could be a big deal, depending on the time of the year. So uh, that height of cut accuracy is very important. So Grasshopper, you're off pretty bad on this, so I'm gonna give you a seven on that. Cut quality. Uh, you know, I've never used the Grasshopper for mowing. Uh, this is the first Grasshopper machine I've ever operated uh, using a mower deck. All of our Grasshoppers are the 900 series diesel, and we use them for aerovating only. Uh, I was a little bit, uh, I really don't know how I feel about the cut quality, to be honest with you. It cuts good, but it really doesn't strike me as over the top good, if that makes any sense. Um, it's a good, solid, clean cut. Uh, I look between the wheel tracks in, when I'm making a pass and I'm looking for scragglers, little pieces of grass kind of sticking up and that's kind of what I base the quality of cut on. And of course, all these yards are dry. I'm mowing them all in the same conditions. It may be different times during the day, but the, the turf is dry to the touch so that uh you know one's not one machine doesn't have to mow in wet grass and one mowing dry that wouldn't be fair and i did find a few scragglers here and there and uh you know i've always heard about how good the grasshopper mower decks cut i was really excited to try this and it wasn't a letdown okay i don't i don't want to dare sound negative here I, I, it wasn't it didn't let me down but in my mind i was expecting this ah, you know this wow moment uh or whatever that wow this thing is the greatest cutting machine i've ever been on i just didn't get that uh what i did get was a good solid clean cutting machine okay i did get that um so the, the quality of cut, uh, I'm going to give it a nine. I mean, it, it's a it's a really good cutting mower, but again, in my mind, I'm, I'm going into it thinking or expecting something different, and I didn't get it. So that's why you know my my review on the quality of cut may sound a little bit negative, but at the end of the day, it is a very good cutting machine, and uh, like I said, I'm going to give it a nine for cut quality. Side discharge. Um, I didn't like it. If, if I'm being completely forthright with you, I didn't like the way it side discharged. Um, it came out a little clumpy, kind of, uh, for lack of better words. Um, it really didn't have a true leading edge coming off the front. It just kind of came out the deck and just kind of scattered, which that's what you want when you side discharge. You want it scattered so that the clippings kind of scatter out over the area and drop down. You don't want clumps of clippings laying all over the grass. But I got this from this mower. And granted, it wasn't terrible. It, it, I'm not talking about baseball size clumps. I'm talking about marble size clumps of grass. I don't know if it's the, a little bit of a lack of blade tip speed where it doesn't really just really grind it up inside there and you know really shoot it outside. Uh, and some of that grass just kind of, as it's going around there, kind of collects against each other a little bit and then it throws the little clump out. Uh, it, it wouldn't the entire time I was mowing. It was basically when I got in areas of the yard like over here in the corner where it gets some more shade during the day so obviously it's going to grow a little bit better than the full sun turf and so it gets a little bit thicker a little bit taller in between cuts over there and that's really where i noticed it the most was where the grass was a little bit taller say than out here in the, in the rest of the yard of course the rest of the yard ain't had a problem it it, it discharges fine uh, but the one time when i did get into some a little bit deeper turf over here in the corner uh i did have some issues with with clumping uh, i noticed it even more so with the bluegrass and uh the fescue cutting at three and a half inches the blue cutting at two and a half and i did notice it more prevalent on the lower cut turf so um you know i don't i don't 
I don't know what I'm supposed to say, <laughs> to be honest with you. I don't, I don't know. I can't fix that. I don't know how to engineer the deck to where it mows differently. Uh, but uh, personally, not a huge fan of it. Um, uh, just I, I like the discharge to come out and scatter. That, that's so that I can cut over the yard one time, it's scattered out, and I can go on to my next yard. So side discharge score, mm, I think I'm gonna have to give it an eight. So striping capabilities, well you tell me. I mean, this thing stripes like crazy. Uh, it does have a, a factory striping uh, flap behind the deck. It uh, does look like it's adjustable. Now, I do want to be completely straightforward with you and honest. Uh, you know, I'm filming this video uh, right about July 1st. Last week, we were at the beach all week. So, the day before we left for the beach, uh, I cut the yard, double cut it. I double cut the yard mowed it this way and then mowed it this way. So these stripes belong to the grasshopper and these stripes belong to the grasshopper. Uh, I did not do that intentionally uh, to show any favoritism whatsoever to grasshopper. I do that every single year I go on vacation. I cut my grass down to three and a half one way and then I took it back down to three the opposite way, double cut it. So both of these striping patterns belong to the grasshopper. And again, it wasn't intentional. It was just the grasshopper was the next mower in line. And it just so happened to time out uh, when we went on vacation. So this was the mower I was using. So that's why I did it that way with this mower. So again, no favoritism to grasshopper. It's just something I do every year so that I don't have to come back to a hay field. I take my grass down a little bit shorter right before I leave for vacation so that uh, you know when I get back it's not quite as deep. We'll look at this striping right here and this striping right here because like I said that's a single cut. This is a single cut uh, together makes it a double cut uh, cutting it two times one each way but you can see the thing stripes like crazy. I mean it it really lays down some really hard lines. So uh, striping capabilities, I'm gonna give it a 9.5. So the next category, I call it smooth operator. Uh, that's the overall comfort of the machine and the ride quality. Uh, they are two different things. Comfort meaning uh, regardless of how the thing rides across the yard, how comfortable is the operator while he's in the cockpit of the machine. I find the comfort to be really, really good. Uh, the platform is not nice and wide. Uh, it has two shock uh, absorbers that are mounted directly to the fenders and directly to the platform there, which helps cushion uh, any lack of ride quality that, that there may be. Remember all the adjustability of the controls. I, I really feel like that plays into the comfort as well. You know, I can bring them up, I can bring them low, I can adjust my front bar forward or backwards. Um, the thing is a pretty comfortable riding stand on. I'd say one of the more comfortable ones so far. Uh, and for that, I'm gonna give it a score of a nine for comfort. Ride quality, different story. It rides pretty bad, just like the rest of them. Of course, I'm not throwing darts at Grasshopper. This has been the case pretty much with every single stand on we've had to date. Um, still waiting on when it actually rides good. Ride quality, meaning when you hit a bump in a yard with any speed, do the front tire stay on the ground? Does the machine bounce around? Does it does it jar you really bad? Uh, and it absolutely does that. Uh, my neighbor's backyard back there and inside the fence back there, they're pretty rough. And uh, mowing my neighbors and my father-in-law's, the objective is to put the machine in a production uh, mode and, and go out there and mow as quickly as fast as I can, uh, getting getting the job done as quickly as I can all while retaining quality you know cut key you know, I did find that this machine uh, whether you're mowing at one mile an hour or top speed it cuts pretty much the same you get this about the same quality of cut when you're mowing over there and you're mowing full speed when you hit a bump it's really rough uh, the uh, front tires came off the ground multiple times 
and even uh, even the back tires, I hit uh, a few spots back there that were so rough uh, it would it would almost bring the back tires off the ground. So I've said it already, and I'll say it again, uh, man. These mower manufacturers have to do something to come up with a smoother riding stand on mower because you know, my yard is smooth as silk. It, when I graded it, it's graded near perfection. The bluegrass back there, it's like mowing across a pool table. It's so smooth. So obviously every yard in the country isn't gonna be like that. There's gonna be some rough mowing and you want something that's just not gonna beat you to death. Now, of course, the comfort of the machine takes away from the ride quality because it's such a comfortable machine. It absorbs a lot of that shock. It really helps out with it, with the ride quality part of it. But it, in the same breath, it still rides pretty bad. It's a pretty rough riding machine. So, uh, you know, ride quality, I'm gonna, I gotta give it a 7.5 just because it, it doesn't ride well at all. And um, again, you know, nothing against the Grasshopper brand. The machine overall was awesome, but man, I just really wish not only Grasshopper, but all of these companies would spend some money on suspension and do something to make the machines ride better and when we're talking about power uh, we'll talk about the motor we are talking about the hydraulics the fuel sensitivity and responsiveness uh, this is a 26 horsepower carbureted engine uh, not sure if they're going to offer a fuel injection option or not uh, i personally am not a fan of the carburetor uh, but i did find that this setup, this combination with this particular mower, this deck size, which is a 52 inch deck, I did not find it lacking in power. I, I feel like it was just enough. Uh, could they add a couple more horsepower or could they uh, go fuel injection and increase a little bit of power and improve the machine? Absolutely, I, I really believe that. But at the same time, I wanna make sure you understand that I don't feel like the machine is underpowered either. I feel like that. I feel like that's plenty of motor to make the machine function as it's intended to function. So as far as the power goes, as, as the way the engine uh, relates to the, the way the machine uh, operates, uh, I gotta give it a nine. It, it does pretty good. But with that said, I would personally prefer a fuel injection motor on this machine. So hydraulics, um, you know, I've said this a few times already. Uh, I like hydraulics uh, that are very responsive, uh, very uh, touchy, touchy-feely type responsiveness. And uh, I like them to be very sensitive. When I, when I barely move, when I move it a quarter of an inch, the, the controls, I want the mower to respond to me moving it a quarter of an inch, okay? I don't like soft hydraulics. Um, I, don't, I don't like stiff hydraulics, uh, but I do like hydraulics that are super sensitive so that they you know, obey my every command regardless of, of what I'm telling it to do. I want it to do it and, and do it instantly. So as far as the feel goes, uh, they feel really good. Uh, one thing that stood out to me is they're not overpowering. Uh, the hydraulics are extremely smooth. I mean, like butter smooth. Uh, they feel different than any of the other machines I've been on. And you'll have to do your own homework on this, but I, th I think Grasshopper uses a little bit of a unique hydraulic system, a little bit different, and that could be why I'm getting a different feel in my, in my fingertips with this. They're not jerky uh, by no means. They're definitely not uh, my ideal hydraulics, meaning uh, there is some play in them. When I'm, when I'm trying to go forward, you know, it takes it a minute for the machine, not a full minute, but you know what I'm saying. It's not instant, okay? When I, when, I, when I give it the throttle, I like for the machine to react. Well, I find with this particular machine, 
uh, you have to kind of get into the motion and then it reacts and then it takes off and of course once you're in motion and, and you know you know you're half speed and you're making slight uh, adjustments going in and out of beds and stuff like that around turns uh, those movements are pretty instant you know that kind of plays into the responsiveness is you don't get it right off the bat uh, there's a little bit of play in there. Of course, you might could adjust the linkage down here to where you get more of that instant feedback. Uh, but the, the one thing that really stands out to me is this thing is just smooth as butter. They are very smooth hydraulics. And uh, I actually like that. I mean, it, it's, not, it's not what I prefer. You know, like I said, I prefer more touchy-feely type hydraulics. But... I like this. I, I like the way the hydraulics operate. So even though this isn't the ideal uh, set of hydraulics for me personally, uh, I've still got to give it a score of a nine because they're just, they work. They work with this machine and they, like I said, they're just butter smooth and they, they feel really good in your hands. So this is a non-scoring category, but the category is hold my sun drop and yep we have a spot for my sun drop or any other beverage you want to put in here this one's pretty cool because it is adjustable so you can see there's a standard uh what is that 12 ounces there's a standard 12 ounce drink can and you can see the room in there and you can actually fit a water bottle in there as well so you could have you a great big old mug right there full of water or whatever and it would hold it with no problem the question is will it stay because of the ride quality you can see how easily that kind of comes in and out so if you're mowing some rough ground i don't think you're going to hold on to your drink all that long it's going to be gone uh, some type of a uh, padding or something like that to line the inside of this where it would grip the can a little better to hold it in place. That will be a good addition to that. Now up here on the dash, here's you a second compartment that could potentially be used for a drink holder. And you see it's pretty deep down in there, which is really nice. And down inside here, you will find a USB plug in where you could actually plug up your phone you could put your phone down in here if you wanted to so i really like this compartment right here that's super nice super sweet so kind of the last category is the verdict and that's kind of my overall thoughts of the machine uh let's talk about these tires um i'm not a fan of them i get it i understand the chunky knobby tire uh for biting on hillside uh conditions or you know maybe mowing rough conditions or something or another like that but from mowing a fine high-end turf uh they're not made for that <laughs> they're just not no matter how easy i was turning around which matter of fact that took away from the productivity a little bit because i just can't whip this one around quite as quickly as the other one because i was in fear of tearing in my grass because of these big knobby tires now does it even says uh 350 mag off road so they are an actual off road tire so does grasshopper offer a more traditional uh less aggressive tread tire i have no idea no clue this is what they sent me uh if i were to buy this machine and, and I were gonna use it, the very first thing I would do before it even touched my yard was I would take it and have new tires put on it. That'd be the first thing. Uh, I'm, just, I'm just not a fan of them. Don't like them in any way, shape, form, or fashion. Uh, overall thoughts of the machine, uh, it is very solid very solid machine uh, I know this is their first year coming out with a stand on mower and um, I, I think they done an incredible job of nailing it the first time uh, could the, is, is there room for improvement uh, there's room for improvement everywhere right this machine will make anyone a great mower uh, 
I, I like it. I like the grasshopper stand no more quite a bit. It's it's a very very well built, uh, very very good cutting machine, high quality from front to back, top to bottom. So I hope you've enjoyed this review of the Grasshopper Stand On. Uh, be sure and like, subscribe, and share. Tell all your buddies. I think we've got one, two, three, four more to go, and we'll be wrapping this thing up. So I've had a blast with this mower, but that's my take on the Grasshopper. And uh, again, I hope you've enjoyed it. Be sure and like, subscribe, and share, and tell all your buddies. And as always, I appreciate you taking time out of your day to watch. I'll check you later.